From the studios of Books in Motion in Spokane, Washington, this is Linda Evans reading The Garden Tour Affair, Book Four in the Garden Mystery Series by Anne Ripley. Now let's begin with The Garden Tour Affair. Prologue The two climbers were crouched not five feet apart on the mountain summit, a disorderly heap of boulders thrown together in Paleozoic times and made slippery today by a fine mist of summer rain. Ah, here we are at the top, said the first. The other didn't answer, only stared. Is something wrong? Why are you looking at me so strangely? I want you to recall some pretty silly things you've said. These are your words, your exact words. Do you remember? It takes so very little, just your hand warm against mine, and our fingers entwined. And I feel as if I'm connecting with your very soul. You said that. Silence for a long moment. I see. Now I understand. I did say that once, I admit it. I'm not ashamed. His green eyes held a kind of pagan innocence. And you said, You are my very heart's heart. I said it, yes. They're quotations from a poet, but they expressed how I felt. Why are you going into this now, for God's sakes? Let's discuss that another time, in another place. It's all down in writing. I... I didn't know that. But I'm going to destroy it. That it happened at all is bad enough. I know it will get out. And if it does, it will be the biggest disgrace of my life. The second climber lunged at the other, like a rattlesnake striking, but also skillfully with one booted foot wedged in a crevice beneath the rocks. The totally unexpected push easily unbalanced the other climber, and the man's green eyes were horrified in surprise as he fell far, far down to the rocks below. Chapter 1 It was hot in northern Virginia, 98, with a comfort index at 120. Tropical Washington's heat monster was loose again, devouring people imprudent enough to step out of the air-conditioned buildings. Louise Eldridge got out of her air-conditioned car and hurried up the mossy walk through deep woods, where even the trees seemed to be sweating. Within ten steps, she herself was dripping like a stevedore. Quickly, as if evading an attack, she slipped in the front door of her low-slung modern house and slammed it. With a swipe of her forearm, she got rid of the heaviest perspiration on her brow. For a minute, she just stood there, trembling with relief, in the chilly feeling 75 degrees. Life was going to be okay, as long as she didn't absent-mindedly open the glass sliding doors and let the beast in. Hi, Ma! A light voice floated into her from the living room. There, her 17-year-old daughter, Janie, was slumped on the couch, as limp as a piece of raw liver. She wore shorts and a halter top and little else. Her blonde hair was splayed over the cushion behind her, her bare feet propped up, a glass of iced tea equipped with a bendable straw clasped in her hands. Her dark-lashed blue eyes were fixed warily on her mother. Louise went over and gave her a kiss. Hello, darling. Janie said, I'm boiling. I just came in from hanging out my undies. Louise could see two lacy brassieres strung on the collapsible wash line in a sunny spot amidst the tall trees. It's beastly, isn't it? She went to the refrigerator and poured herself a tall glass of iced tea, then returned to the living room and perched on a sturdy antique chair opposite Janie. Maybe your hair would be better off in pigtails. Janie's mouth turned down, as if Louise had failed a test. We're not going to talk about the weather and hair, are we? No. The only thing on the girl's mind was the trip with her parents that she didn't want to take. They had started this debate last evening and gone to bed with a winner uncertain. Janie said, I'll be okay by myself. Louise didn't answer. She thought, Oh, no, you won't. 
But the girl's statement hung in the air, waiting like an anxious atom to bond with another to make a conversation molecule. I'll be okay. Sample complete. Ready to continue?